Hi there, this is Corey Ringdahl with the Red Carpet Report. Uh, tonight we are here to celebrate the extraordinary Stan Lee. We'll be talking with uh, many of the luminaries who are going to be celebrating him with us. And uh, come along with us and my fellow guardians as we have that exact conversation. Um, I'm Corey with Red Carpet Report. Hi, Could you introduce yourself to the old camera, please? Yeah, hi, camera. I'm Michael Uslin, the originator and executive producer of the Batman movie franchise. And since Stan Lee taught me to get in a plug whenever I can, <laughs> my memoir is The Boy Who Loved Batman, published by Chronicle Books. So you'd say you are vengeance, you are the knight. Oh, only Kevin Conroy can <laughs> say that. I would never, ever attempt to do that. So uh, have you, how, how well do you know Stan? I first met Stan when I was 11 years old. Awesome. Uh, do, you, do you want to go into that wonderful experience? Yeah, I will. Um, Fantastic Four number nine had just come out. And I begged my mom, we lived an hour outside of New York and New Jersey, begged my mom to take me to New York so I could see the Baxter building. So my poor That's really, really cute. Really cute. Very geeky. <laughs> Terribly. So my poor mom did it. I had a day off from school. And we're walking around Midtown, and the cops, nobody we stop knows where the Baxter building is. So in desperation, <laughs> we walk into a phone booth. Do you remember those things? The, yeah. We walked into a phone booth. My mom called Marvel Comics. And this lovely, wonderful lady named Flo Steinberg got on the phone, who was Stan's secretary <laughs> and assistant. And my mom uh, talked to her, and she said, oh, Mrs. Uslan, I am so sorry. There really is not a Baxter building. Stan and Jack just made that up. Well, Flo felt so sorry for this 11-year-old boy. She told my mom, bring him up to our offices. We're at 655 Madison Avenue. She brought me up there. She introduced me to Jack Kirby, who autographed my copy of All Winners Number 18, and introduced me to Stan Lee. And this was right around the time Fantastic Four Number 9 came out. And that was my first meeting with Stan. That is beautiful. You don't still have that comic, do you? Sure I do. That's Amazing! Holy crap! Wow! I'm, uh, I've never been more deeply envious of a stranger than I am right now. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, we met as adults the first time in the early 70s. I taught the first, world's first ever college accredited course on comic books at Indiana University. Got a lot of publicity. And the first call I got from the industry came from Stan Lee. My phone in Bloomington, Indiana rings one day. And it's, hiya, Mike, this is Stan Lee from Marvel Comics in New York City. I'm getting a lot of impressions today. <laughs> I call it my burning bush moment. There's no other way I could describe it. He was supportive, and at that point in time, he became not only my idol, but my mentor, my friend, and ultimately we were able to work together creatively. So it's been an amazing journey. So he didn't just inspire you through his work, he inspired you as a person and as a mentor. He absolutely did. Um, I am a huge proponent that Stan's comics, as well as DC superheroes, help formulate all of our readers in the 50s, 60s, 70s, help formulate our own code of ethics, our own morals. I think they had that degree of an impact on us. And I think that's an amazing gift to humanity that I don't know how you even begin to calculate. Wow, excellent. Thanks for the uh, free class. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. Have a really great night tonight. Thanks so much. Great to be here. Thank you. Hey, folks, I hope you had as good a time as I did. Uh, make sure you leave a comment below uh, telling us about how Stan Lee changed your life. Uh, give us a like. Definitely a subscribe if you haven't already. And remember, Excelsior. <laughs>